put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Django Unchained Move View Set during the era of slavery in a southern state in America two years before the Civil War, this rather fictional take on history, not unlike Inglorious Bastards, has a slave named Django be freed, bought and freed, by a bounty hunter named Dr. Schultz, a German immigrant to America, and he needs Django to identify some people that abused him as in earlier when he was a slave and he in return gives Django some of the bounty and helps him to become a bounty hunter himself and he eventually agrees to really help him get basically get his wife back excuse me who's still a slave they were sold separately. I really shouldn't make some joke about like toys and so sold and you know accessories. I'm sorry, that's terrible. Specifically to punish them. And I think a good part, a good thing to start talking about is how this deals with the touchy subject. It doesn't exactly tread around carefully. I've, I've heard this compared somewhat to Blazing Saddles. I've only seen clips of that film, but I see what they mean. This very much points to the dichotomy between how white people were treated and how black people were treated. And yes, by the way, if you are at all averse to hearing the N-word, this is probably not the movie for you. It's in pretty much every sentence. It's maybe every fourth or fifth word spoken in the movie. Period. And yeah, it just it points to how how silly these these different standards are. And at, at the same time it has fun with these different you know, poking fun at them, and making us realize how horrible it was during slavery. One of the very first images, pretty much, the, the very first image has you seeing a, a beautiful mountain side. I'll get a little more into that, and literally like the second thing you see is a back of a slave. And he's been whipped. Yeah, just clear, just has scars all the way across his back. And then you see. Yeah, I'm not giving a ton away, but yeah, you see white men on horses, and these slaves are just walking by the side. And it's it's clearly a long way, and it's clearly extremely tiring for them. And it just immediately makes the point that this was truly horrible for these people. And yeah, the other other than that, I, re I really do have to get into much like Inglorious Bastards, this reverses the role of the victim and the perpetrator 
historically, where that film had Jews brutally taking out Nazis. This has a former slave literally do things to white people that, you know, so some of these things at least have been done to slaves, and he is, again, very, very brutal to them. And there is some... There are some eth ethical issues raised by this. We, we do have this... The, the film doesn't really say this is a good thing. You know, the, the character of Django is an anti-hero at best. There, there are definitely some things he's, he does in the film that you're going to disagree with. And, you know, whether you go as far as think that he's just not at all who we should, we should be rooting for, or if you just think that he goes too far, but in the end he is basically right, that depends on the people, and it creates debate in that way. But yeah, so you, you have this thing of Tarantino sort of pokes at us and asks, would it really be better if it was the other way around? And kind of, yeah, eventually, at least I get to the realization that, well, realization. Really, it's, it's just violence and, you know, doing horrible things to each other that we should try to avoid in general. Violence breeds more violence. Very much a theme in this movie. Now, with that, with that said, the it is a as well a revenge film, and the revenge is earned. Like you don't really see that much that Django does, where you just feel like, well, it's just you know put in there so that it's, no, no, it's, it's built up, you, you get why he wants to hurt these people bad. And another thing I really should say very early in this is, yes, this movie is two hours and 44 minutes, not counting the end credits, and yes, it is, some people are going to call it indulgent, some people are going to call it overlong, I prefer to just call it Tarantino, and Yes, politely ask the man for another serving as, as soon as he feels up to it, because I enjoy the crap out of this movie, and frankly, I think any fan of his will. If you're not much of a fan, you might find it overlong, and you might just want to do like a rental at a later date, and if you're really not at all a fan of his, this is not the movie for you, because the, this is just, this is pure Tarantino. And yes, the movie is, you know, upwards of three hours long. And I could definitely think of things that could have been cut, though I don't really want to have them cut. But with that said, m you know, most of the time, in fact, to, to quote one of the characters, more than most, in fact, I was doing one of three things. I was tapping my foot along to the music, and yes, there is actual rap music used in this, and it fits beautifully. I, do, I don't know how he does it, but Tarantino just knows how to use music in movies. I was laughing uproariously, or my heart was pounding. There is serious suspense in this movie. It is intense. I, I think this is a good time to go into Django's character, because that's really where a lot of it can, comes from. Because a lot of the time, basically he's playing a part, and so is Dr. King Schultz, Dr. Schultz. So they have to pretend to be someone other than they are. And Django is a very determined person, and he has been, he's been mistreated his entire life. So he really badly wants to just draw his gun and settle it right here, right now. And there are so many scenes where you see his hand go there. It's, he even straight up cocks it at... Uh, and, and you're just like, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna unload on them and it's gonna end bad because they're, they're outnumbering him. And this is a, where can he take cover? And, it works so well. You're really terrified of 
how it'll go. And at the same time, you really understand why he is so passionate. Basically, Django is a very hardened person, and as I said, very determined, but he does have a heart. And like I said, there are some things he does. He does them for the right reason, but you might disagree with some of his choices. And yeah, you, you just you understand why he has a high threshold of pain and of doing things that the rest of us would you know, deem unthinkable. But he is he's playing a part. He has to stay in character. Schultz told him that, and he yeah he goes above and beyond. And that actually also brings me into this is a film that really gets to you. It, it really works as far as, you know, getting the emotions. You really care when you see someone abused, and you really cheer when someone takes a bullet that they really deserve to get. And really all the characters in this are just great. And I... Before I get too much into the main characters, I want to talk just a little bit about some of these... The, there are these cameos. I, I, I'm not going to give all of them away, but just keep your eyes open. And there, there are some Tarantino... What was it called? Alums? Yeah, some, some, some people you've seen Tarantino work with before. Just keep your eyes open for certain... I, 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 just, I can't give it away, but it's, it's just, it's gold. And the... I'm gonna give just one of them away. Don Johnson is freaking amazing in this. I, it's not that much of a spoiler because it's in the opening credits. And he's, he's just such a great, such... He plays one of these slave owners, and every single... There's not a character involved in the slave trade that you don't hate. And he's... Yeah, he just has this great kind of... Yeah, you just... You, you really hate him. And he has a great look. He has this beard and... Just the... There's this really funny bit where he is supposed to explain how Django should be treated. And he's he's trying to explain he shouldn't be treated like one of the like one of the slaves. And then uh, you know he's asked, well, do you mean we should treat him like a, a white man? No, 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 he's I mean he's black, so it's, that's where it gets into kind of blazing silence territory. You know, it's it's this oh, wait, well but they're not really people, so we can't treat them like people, so what do we do? And it's, it's, it's walking that balance really well of being kind of funny and, you know, just poking at this, you know, some, some, a little bit maliciously, maybe, or maliciously, a little bit cruelly, just kind of poking at this gash. And at the same time, making you realize that, you know, it really was, that it's two completely different standards. And, you know, any, any informed person today knows that there's really not that much difference. But we're, we're all human beings. I'm not going to get preachy. Anyway, the characters... Before I get too much into that, the, the casting is just fantastic, even in, like, minor roles. Because they find, found such great types where, like, there's one of the more prominent side characters. I think he's called, like, Billy Boyd. He has this, he's, he's like missing one of his, I don't know what specific teeth are called in English, it's not in my first language, one of the, like, from the sides. So when he smiles and you see from the side, you just see this hole where there's supposed to be a tooth. And also one of the, one of the slaves, he's got like four teeth as, as the front teeth, you know, he it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, and it really works. It's really believable that they, these are people who lived back then, you know. The, the level of detail is extremely high, through and through, you know, props, settings, clothing, everything. So more on the, on the characters. The, 
there were several characters that were specifically written for the actor who portrayed the part. And among the more prominent are Dr. Schultz, played by Christoph Waltz, Calvin Candy, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and Stephen, played by Samuel Jackson. And you can really tell that Tarantino wanted these three for these three roles. And he really... Tarantino has this way of bringing out the best in his actors and really making it just utterly memorable. You just, you do not forget what you saw them be in, and, and just the way, it's, it's really amazing what he did with really all three. I, I, I want to make it absolutely clear, Jamie Foxx as well as Django, fantastic. I, I want to make this point also that the, my friend and fellow reviewer Pyramid Head already made this point partially because the movie came out for him before it came out for me. The, the character of Jango speaks in this sort of more, more, you know, he doesn't speak a ton and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't like yell, he just speaks kind of, and it makes sense. It, it works as both the trope of this anti-hero, the, the hardened anti-hero of the Spaghetti Western, and it makes sense as him being a former slave. And he hasn't even been, I mean, when we, the, when the film starts, he is still a slave. So, as, you know, over the course of the film, he, it hasn't been that long since he was a slave, so he still remembers, and it was a lifetime of slavery. So, yeah. But he also does a fantastic job. Waltz, he is this, basically his character is, is a kind but determined person. He's, he's very much a mentor to Django. He, he teaches him the ways of bounty hunting. And he just has this, yeah, I just, you, you just, you like him and yet you can tell there is something more you know, he, he can still do things that are, I mean, he does, he kills people for money. That's, that's how he makes a living. And they do actually, they, they draw a little bit of a parallel between slavery and bounty hunting. That, that, and, the, and there is this thing of, you know, you, you might say that a bounty hunter is also not the greatest person, but still the idea being a bounty hunter hunts criminals. And a lot of people would say that that's a good thing. But at the same time, at the end of the day, slavery and bounty hunting, you're getting money for, you know, human meat, as, as they put it in the film. And it's, it's a clever way of, of putting it, of reminding us that, uh, yeah, you know, and, and making us a bit more uncomfortable, which is something Tarantino is good at and likes to do. Stuck in the middle with you, anyone. And... Yeah, it just he's he's just a great character. You really you really like him and the relationship between him and Django is also quite good. There is this thing of he, he says at an early point, and I think the line's in the trailer anyway, I've never freed a slave before, I feel responsible for you. He he genuinely wants to help him and Django I mean Django has every right in the world to hate basically everyone who, you know... When the film starts, he is still being bought as a slave. Sure, he's being granted his freedom, but it is still basically that situation. And... Yeah, I mean, you, you could imagine that he might hate this guy as well, but... There is this sort of level of respect between them where it, it really works, it's believable. And it is, of course, in part due to the help of Schultz that he is able to you know, move around. If he had just fled as being a slave, he wouldn't have, you know, he would constantly be hunted. And I think I'm gonna save DiCaprio for, for last. Samuel Jackson is basically 
a fellow bad guy. He is a slave, but he's like the head slave. And he's, he's a really despicable person as well. He's basically the spy. He knows how to read other black people, so he knows how to look at slaves or former slaves and deduce what is going on, and that makes him a good asset for Calvin Candy, who he is head slave for, and it makes him very dangerous for Django and Dr. Schultz. And the performance is also... I, I don't remember another performance that had me hating Samuel Jackson. And, and it's like, I can still... I, I appreciate his performance enormously, because I love him as an actor. And to have him play a character that... I mean, he and Tarantino knew that the audience were gonna hate this guy. And it's just, it's, it's courageous from both of them, and it's... Yeah, it is, it's, it's very interesting to have a character who is actually a slave, but who really is not at all one of the good guys or one of the victims. And he has kind of special privileges, like he's the one who tattles on the other slaves, and he's the one who makes sure they get punished. And he doesn't get punished. He even he mouths off to Calvin, and he still you know nothing happens from that. And Calvin Candy himself, DiCaprio. This is his first role as a villain. And Tarantino said, told him, because he was he was anxious about playing it as cruelly and as despicably as it was written. And Tarantino told him, if you don't do it, people will never forgive you. And he did it. He, he just... I will never look at Leonardo DiCaprio the same way again. I cannot believe how much he just completely washes away his image of a of, of this, of, of the love interest, of the, of the fluffy male romantic lead. He's still charming in this, but it, it actually works to make him even more sinister. It's, it's that kind of villain role, or even that behavior. I think, without spoiling anything, the best example I can really give is to, to give you an idea of the effect he has on the audience. At one point, he caresses, like, the, the front of the horse's face or something. I, I'm an animal person, I don't know what it's called. And the horse doesn't seem to mind. And it's, it doesn't, I don't think he's doing it to threaten the horse. But the moment it happened, I literally had a chill running down my spine. And that just tells you that is how much you hate this guy. He can't even do what seems to be a positive gesture without you thinking that it's there's there's something wrong. Excuse and he just he's he's credible. Every every single character is credible, and it's, it's like typical Tarantino. You you believe these characters, even the most despicable ones, even the ones you hate the most the ones you want to see die a horrible death. You believe that they could exist, at least in the crazy world of Tarantino. Because they do, they do have motivation. He has a philosophy, I'm not going to give it away here, but... Yeah, I mean, when you hear him explain, you understand how his mind works and how he can be the way he is. And it's just a, a mesmerizing performance. It really says a lot that he is not introduced for quite a while in the film, and yet the, the film doesn't... You, you don't miss his presence before he is there, and then once you... once he... 
once he does g appear, he really commands the film and really you... It feels like he's been there the entire time in a way he just... Yeah, he's, he's just truly vicious. Now, the... The typical long dialogue and very wordy dialogue and these exchanges where kind of this, some of the same words get keep getting thrown back and forth between characters are very much present and they're, as usual, a lot of fun to listen to. I, I can't really give anything away or I certainly don't want to. I, I will say there's there's a lot of these little exchanges where someone does something or says something that you only understand a scene or two later and when you first just see it happen you just think it's just this bizarre character quirk and then when it's actually explained it makes perfect sense and Tarantino just has a way of doing this where it just yeah it there, there was a lot of effort put into this script and it also it keeps surprising you. you it keeps going where you do not expect it to and even when you kind of feel like I know where this is going suddenly something happens that you didn't think was going to happen and when even when you think you know what's going to happen it still feels like surprising how it happens or when exactly it happens now also the, among the really effective ways of showing the you know how horrible slavery was a lot of movies are made where basically our lead characters are just supposed to be beautiful just you know as far as their looks go, just flawless. And here, Django has this long scar over, I think it's his left, his left eye. Like, across much of his forehead, up, going up. And it just, it tells a story, you just know that, that had to hurt. And they, what did they do to him that caused that kind of scar? And he, He's also been branded, and he's not the only one, and just, yeah, you, you realize how horrible slavery was, which I think a lot of people have forgotten. And going back to the, the level of detail and just the gorgeous look of the film, there are these bits where, like, our, you know, our two heroes are anti-heroes are riding into the sunset and you just know Tarantino sat there waiting for like the magic hour and wait is that sunrise or sunset or whatever and it just yeah and and you have all these beautiful outdoors shots exterior shots where you just have these these snowy mountains and just the 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 I don't know, desert, I guess, around, the, it's just beautiful, beautifully done. The cinematography is fantastic. There are these really fun, really sudden, quick zooms, zooms in, like, especially sometimes on people's faces, and they're, they're a lot of fun. There's a definite Sergio Leone inspiration, complete with some Ennio Morricone in the score, uh, and... Yeah, just the, the, some of the angles, the, the way some of it is edited, it's, if you like spaghetti western, you got to see this movie. Yeah, I know that wasn't technically romantically accurate. And it's also, it mixes sort of different cultural aspects very well. You've got this western, spaghetti western, you've got the pre-KKK, uh, like I said, this rap, it's just, I don't know how he mixes it all together without it just really, you know, being like oil and water, but it just, it goes together somehow, he just makes it work. Now, the... I think that might more or less be it. And we 
also it's just it's a very energetic film it's just I I didn't really feel like it ever really stood still like it's it's again it's typical Tarantino it's not necessarily that there's constantly something happening but when there isn't something literally happening you either feel like it could happen any moment or it's a scene where you just know okay now I can relax and you know get some get some energy back get to catch my breath you know there's some really great recurring elements in dialogue where something is said several times and then the last time it's said it's kind of turned and it, it just works really well I, I cannot, I refuse to give any of those away and it's of course very over the top and I, I really haven't quite made the point of it is a very bloody and gory film. It is extremely unpleasant and disturbing. And it's actually one of the times where he makes the violence hard to watch and you're like, you're squirming in your seat and looking away from the screen. Whereas he, yeah, he, he used to revel in it more. And here it is more this yeah, un unpleasant. I, f I feel like with this one, he's more... Again, I'm, I'm not saying it's not entertaining and it's not enjoyable as just a dumb exploitation action flick, but I feel like he's also trying to get us to think and talk about violence and violent revenge. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.